Hey guys, welcome back to Proc Nation and in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the BenQ GV1 mini portable projector. Now this thing is very, very cool. It's a tiny four factor projector that can also be transformed into a Bluetooth speaker. This can be thrown in your backpack, taken anywhere you go for a fun movie night or listening to music if you're in the Bluetooth mode. But how good is it really? Let's find out in this video. As usual, we're gonna be starting off with our unboxing. The packaging of it is quite nice. All of the information can be found at the back for you to figure out. The packaging is tied very neatly in there. You've got the power cables with different attachments for different regions, and you've got the pouch to carry it in, which is very nice for the portability, which is very big. HDMI to Type-C, as well as Type-C to Type-C cables included with the box. And lastly, you have a remote control to control the device overall. Finally, you have the BenQ GV1 itself, and right off the bat, that thing is tiny and looks really great. Speaking of how it looks, let's talk about the build quality and design on the GV1. The build quality is by far one of my favorite things about this device in general. Just the way that it is built, it looks so cute, but also makes so much sense in terms of portability and functionality. To tilt it, you literally just tilt the top head of it up and down and it's very smooth and feels very nice and long lasting. You also have the focusing ring on that side as well, but the tilt function is really great. At the top, we have three touch buttons and one physical button to turn it on and off, while the others are power up and down and Bluetooth connectivity. Tapping on the button once takes you to Bluetooth connectivity mode for pairing. Now you have the focusing ring on the left, the motion is quite minimal, but we'll talk about this more later. At the bottom, you have the Type-C input as well as the DC input, which is where you basically charge it from or use it connected if you want a brighter display. The Type-C input can be used for Type-C to Type-C for support the device or with the provided HDMI converter if you want to connect HDMI. At the bottom, you also have a tripod thread if you want to put it on a light stand or a tripod stand for convenience, which is great. Lastly, we have the lens itself, which is the LED light source. It is low heat emittance, so you can touch it without having to burn your hands after long intensive usage, which also comes with auto keystone correction, so installation is a lot easier. Speaking of installation, let's talk about the setup. On first use, just hold the power button and you'll be greeted with the BenQ logo. Just go through the four simple steps of choosing your language, connecting to your Wi-Fi, choosing your time zone for the region, and finally, just agreeing to the terms of service. And that's pretty much it. You're in. That's how simple it is. You're greeted with the intro UI. Now, obviously, to control on this, you're going to need the remote control. The remote control is built like most smart TV controls, and pretty much anything you need is going to be on there. And usability is pretty straightforward. You have your navigation keys, and you can even switch to a mouse mode if you feel like. Once that's done, you have various connectivity modes for iOS, Mac, Android, or if you want to use a PC, as well as input source if you're using HDMI or whatever. So you can have different applications installed as well, but settings, network, Bluetooth, pictures, sound, recent apps, Screensaver, all apps, and all these other settings can be found below as well. But let's talk about the app installation. This uses the Android TV OS to install applications on there. So obviously we installed YouTube and Netflix right there for that because it uses the same Android TV OS to install these applications on the projector itself. And then you can find them under the shortcuts and you can launch them anytime you want. And the UI will look very similar to most Android TV boxes if you've purchased them before or the PlayStation if you have ever tried that before. Now let's talk about the actual projected image itself. Something to note right off the bat is that you can get the screen to look quite large depending on how far back you place it or how close you place it. Plus the auto keystone correction makes it very easy to set up and install. You don't have to deal with a lot of mess there or hassle when you're setting it up. The one major thing that I should mention is that it is only 480p, so the native resolution is gonna be 480p, but it supports up to 1080p in an input. Another very important thing to note also is that if you've connected it to a power source, it's going to be a lot brighter than when you disconnect it from a power source. It is very noticeable the change in the power output once you do eject it, and you can clearly see that it's connected or disconnected from the power, an example of which I'm going to show you on screen right now. When it's connected, it's pretty bright. When you disconnect it, you see it get a little bit dimmer, and then connect it back in again, and it's going to get a lot brighter. So keep that in mind. If you want to use it a lot brighter, you're going to need it plugged in at all times. Now, obviously, this means if you're using it portably, it's going to take away a lot of that brightness, but that's a give and take with these kind of devices. You can also use AirPlay mode to connect your MacBook or Apple device to it directly. Now, something to keep in mind, if your internet connection isn't as fast or stable, you might face a little bit of lag, as you can see right here, scrolling up and down. The reaction on the projected image is a little bit slower. But honestly, this doesn't really matter if you're using it for media consumption. Now, secondarily, if you don't want to use AirPlay, you can obviously use the Type-C to HDMI converter. And I was using this with the Google Chromecast to get that smart TV connection. And I was able to control this using just my voice. Check it out. 
Hey Google, play Sherlock from Netflix on the TV. So obviously if you want to turn it into a voice automated device, you can do that. And yeah, just keep your Chromecast connected to it and you're good to go. Other features obviously include using the inbuilt application for YouTube or Netflix, but you can also cast using your smartphone. In this case, the Android phone. You can have this from pretty much any Android phone if you use the casting service. Here we're using a Samsung device and it works pretty well. So you can use your vertical applications as well to project onto it or even play games if you feel like, if you want to play Among Us on a bigger screen projected, you can do that as well. Lastly, if you don't want to carry your remote everywhere you go, you can scan the QR code and download the BenQ smart control application that transforms your phone into the controller, which gives you a little bit better control for the mouse if you want to use that. But yeah, you have that option as well. Finally, let's talk about the Bluetooth connectivity because that's the secondary mode. Pairing it up is very simple. Like I said, go into pairing mode, pair it up and you're good to go. Now, this one is something that a lot of people have been talking about, especially when it comes down to the Huawei ecosystem. We've seen the MatePad Pros, we've seen all the new phones coming out. How well does this fit in to that ecosystem and how- Sound-wise, it's pretty good in quality, nothing extraordinary, but you wouldn't be disappointed to consume content and listen to music. Now let's talk about the pros and cons on the GB1. The first pro obviously for me is gonna be the portability. I think the portability factor on this alone is really great. I love the fact that you can just throw it in your backpack and you're good to go. The second pro on this would be the build quality. It is built very well. Now this is a very tiny and portable device, but that does not mean they neglected the build quality. It is built really well. The hinge mechanism works really well. Overall, you do feel like it's a premium device holding it in. The finish on it is very nice and smooth. And overall, it just looks really nice and cute. Look at that, look at that. look how cute that is. I just, I just really like how it's built overall. Great, great mini projector. Now the third pro on this would be the speaker and the Bluetooth capability to transform this into a speaker. Now, when I say that the speakers on this are pretty good, take that with a grain of salt because it's not comparable to actual Bluetooth speakers in my opinion, but to play movies on and listen to music on on the go is really good. It gets quite loud. It's pretty bassy for the size of it. And I like the distribution of sound overall. It's just well distributed overall. So if you place the projector in front of you and you're watching a movie, the sound that you get towards you is going to be very satisfactory and you're going to enjoy whatever movie you're watching out of this. Very good stuff. Now let's talk about the cons on the GB1. One of the cons I faced was when I plugged in the Type-C to HDMI cable, I wasn't able to output the sound from an external speaker connected via Bluetooth. So you can connect another speaker to this. I had the JBL speaker linked up to this. I wasn't able to get the audio output from that even though it was connected to that device. So that was a little bit confusing. And I feel like it wasn't very clear on how you can actually have your sound distributed, whether I want the sound coming in from this or I wanna have it come out from another Bluetooth device. But if you use the inbuilt applications to play off of it, you can use the external device as your Bluetooth device, which is pretty, pretty good. The device is 480p only. I'm not gonna put that under a con because obviously the main factor on this is portability and not 4K or amazing image quality. It's more about just having something you can carry on with you anywhere and get pretty decent quality out of and watch movies, sound quality and enjoy with your friends wherever you go. So that's not really a con to me. The second, I guess, con, it's not really even a con. Something a little bit annoying is that the focusing dial here isn't very accurate. So it's a very minimal difference to get the actual focus. So most of the times I'm not even sure if I got the focus right because it's such a tiny movement and if you move it just a little bit, it'll go out of focus. So I feel like that ring could have been dampened a little bit more so you can get more headway with it. But yeah, I think the focusing ring is a little bit annoying to use overall. So what are our final thoughts on the GV1 and should you purchase it? Well, in my personal opinion, everything aside that we talked about earlier, specs and everything aside, the form factor alone and the portability factor on this really make it desirable for someone like me. I love when I can carry things anywhere I go without having to take a billion wires and, and, and a huge backpack or whatever. Just drop this into your backpack and you're good to go. So yeah, overall, definitely recommend this product. If you're looking for a portable projector, obviously you're gonna have a lot more alternates out there that you can get, but for the build quality on this and how it feels in hand and the performance overall, I do believe that this is a very great product to check out. So really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and do consider subscribing for more content just like this. And we'll see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.